Anyway, it's stupid o'clock in the morning. We're in the middle of nowhere. This can only mean one thing. That we're about to start an insane transport challenge, ladies and gentlemen. I can't say too much because I'm in a bit of a hurry. My bus is due very, very soon. But we are going to see, once again, how far we can get from London by bus only in just two days. So join me on this massive four part trip to see how far we can get. This is a repeat of our last video uh, where we got as far as Sheffield but some of you in the comments pointed out we could have got a lot further so all going well we'll be on track to smash that one out of the park today. Just waiting for our very first bus the 313 um, you may be thinking this doesn't look like London. Well, it is only just, just around the corner up ahead is the border of Hertfordshire. I believe this is the most northerly bus stop in London. So without further ado, let's board our first bus if it turns up. As we're arriving here is our first bus of the trip, the 313. So we have already left London and crossed the border into Hertfordshire. So yes, the 313 is one of only a handful of London bus routes which run outside the M25 and into the neighbouring counties. So this bus is very useful for us. We're on this bus for really not very long at all, less than 10 minutes, so we're already coming into Potter's Bar Station, which is our next interchange point. And welcome to Potter's Bar Station. Our free on free bus. This is where it terminates, and this is our first stop in Hertfordshire, leaving London. And here is our next bus, the 84 to St Albans. Oh, can I have singles and organs, please? Thank you. Best seat on the bus. Oh, we're not supposed to go down here. Why are we going down here? Bottom bar is my local area, so I do I do know it quite well. I mean, this bus is not supposed to go down this road. Well, this is going to be an interesting trip, isn't it? I think we might be going on an unannounced diversion. So, we're approaching at St Albans, let's talk about the operator that's running this route, Sullivan Buses. Now, up until recently, Sullivan Buses had a very big presence in London and Hertfordshire. But as I record this video, about two weeks prior to this, Sullivan buses lost the contracts for 10 of their bus routes operating within Greater London. And this means that Sullivan buses are down to about 20% of the size that they were two weeks ago. Nevertheless, their commercial operations around Hertfordshire are still running, um, seemingly to a good standard. Um, they're repurposing the buses that were used in London on these routes. So they're just due to get a nice big upgrade. This is an Auburn City train station. Major station on the Thameslink route. And welcome to the terminus in St Albans. St Albans is a lovely place, I love St Albans. Our 84 is just going to turn off its engines there. This main street in St Albans also shop serves as a main sort of bus interchange. You can see we've got lots and lots of colourful buses here. One of which we'll be taking in just a few moments. Wait a second. There's our bus. There's our bus. We'll be taking to Newton. So last time we saw the 321 between 
St Albans and Luton when we did this trip before, but this time we're getting the 7 2 1, which is, as the name suggests, a limited stop route. It's been introduced just in the past couple of months. Oh, can I have a single to lift, please? Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Good morning. Good morning. A nice driver. Yes, our 721. Fast express bus route to Luton. Just look at how fast we're going. This is why I love express routes and this is why I believe all but two of our buses we're going to be getting today are express bus routes. We're already coming into Harpenden. Now, a lot of you may not have been to Luton before, but Luton is better known for its airport, London Luton Airport. We're not going to the airport today, we're going right into the centre of Luton to the Luton Station Interchange. And we have a very, very exciting bus for our next one. Is it a bus? I don't know. You'll see what I mean. And we're now pulling into Luton Station Interchange, which is a combined bus station and train station. You can see Luton Railway Station on the right here, served by Thameslink and East Midlands Railway. And yes, this is Luton's bus station. Luton is probably one of the most bus-dense places I've ever seen outside of London, so it shouldn't be difficult at all to get a bus from here. I can see our bus question mark here already. Very pleasant run on the 721. Thank you. Yes, Luton bus station. I'm just in the MR class 360. Go around the corner here. Luton is one of the few cities in the UK which has a guided busway and there are plenty of bus routes that run from here that go on the guided busway. I've got like the A, B and the C, all the lettered routes, um, as well as a few numbered routes as well. We've got like the F70, F77 which go to Milton Keynes. We will also be going to Milton Keynes today, but we'll be going on the X1. Now the X1 is a I don't know what it is, BusTimes.org thinks it's a bus, but Arriva advertise it as a coach. However, we will be counting it as a bus in our video today because the £2 single bus fare is valid on it, so we'll have a hopefully very nice luxurious experience over to Milton Keynes. Just so many buses here, got red buses, blue buses, stagecoach, everything as our brand new bus is just coming around the corner. This is our X1 coach. You can see it is a proper coach. It is a Thames Safari HD12. This is going to be a very cool experience, I think. Hello, can I have a single to Milk and Keynes, please? Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. For two pounds. As off we go on the X1 to Milton Keynes. Isn't this amazing? This bus has three point seat belts heated um, because this bus is able to operate services on the motorway, it is a coach after all. This bus service has been operating since very recently, since just the end of July 2024. Um, seems to be relatively well used, um, I'd say may or maybe 10 passengers on this coach. For £2, incredibly good value. Uh, so just running along our right hand side is the Luton to Dunstable guided busway. It is the second longest busway in the UK after the Cambridgeshire Guided Busway. But I believe it is the busiest busway in the UK with services every few minutes. Because we're a coach, we're too big to go on the busway, so we have to run just alongside it. Spent most of our journey trundling along the A5, 
which is the main road which links uh, Luton with Milton Keynes. This A5 road goes all the way to Hollyhead in Wales. So this is the main road going, well historically the main road going from London to Wales. This huge array of warehouses that we're passing now are one of Amazon's... Look at how many of them there are! These are Amazon's main distribution centres for London and the South East. Look at how many of them there are, there are more in the distance as well. If you go along the M1 you can see tons and tons of these. So if you've ordered a parcel from Amazon before and you live in the South East, then there's a very, very good chance that it's passed through one of those many warehouses. But even if you don't live in the South East, Amazon parcels are often transported around the UK. Now Milton Keynes, I don't know why my gimbal's being very weird, we're not quite aligning with the horizon here, but Milton Keynes is a very interesting city because a hundred years ago, none of this existed. Milton Keynes is a brand new city built from the ground up in the past 60 to 70 years or so. Um, and if there's one thing that Milton Keynes is synonymous with, it's roundabouts. There are roundabouts everywhere in Milton Keynes. Um, that's because it has a very um, well-developed road system, so there's theoretically very little congestion because there are always lots of routes. It was the city designed with cars in mind. Another roundabout. And that coming around the corner, there's going to be another roundabout. And another roundabout. And another one. That also goes our X1 bus. It's going to head to the railway station, Milton Keynes, just about 15 minutes down the road. With our brand new bus route. I do recommend that you check it out if you're in the area. We are truly spoiled on that bus route. Okay, occasionally boots do grub, so hopefully this one does. This is all just... Oh, there we go. I can see some grub in the corner. What the hell is tempura rice? As a Japanese person, I'm a little bit disappointed. I have a new innocent juices flipper in a winner. If you follow my trip reports before, you'll know I love innocent juices and smoothies. I'm feeling a bit like an inner winner today. We've got all the way to Milton Keynes and we're still on time, so that deserves a little celebration. And this is Milton Keynes Shopping Centre. Quite a few rather expensive looking retailers as we just passed Hotel Chocolat, Perfume Shop, Hublot, the Marks and Spencer's just around the corner. I mean, I'm tempted. Octonauts, £1.25 for one ride. And these used to be 10p. If you're a fan of the Octonauts, let me know down in the comments below. So here comes our bus with seemingly broken blinds, but it is going to be a Stagecoach Gold on the X6 to Northampton. Hi, uh, can I have a single to Northampton, please? Yep. Oh, perfect. Thank you very much. Quite a luxurious interior. With our first one of these from Stagecoach of the trip. See, Santa Adam Bank seems to have some sort of office here. Assuming because it's quite close to London and most likely cheaper than London, a lot of companies are going to start moving out from London to here in Milton Keynes. I have to say though, these Stagecoach Gold seats on this bus are very, very comfortable. They're very soft and squishy to the touch. So you really just sink into them. They'll more than suffice for this 50 minute or so journey. Actually past more fulfillment centres, this really is the land of fulfillment centres, isn't it? I suppose it's a good place to locate them because about halfway between London and Birmingham it's effective for serving both the London area but also the West Midlands. I don't know, it might just be the age of the bus but the engine on this bus feels really quite limp. 
very slow to accelerate. Has to get to really high revs to do very much. I mean, to give it to them, this bus is over 15 years old. So, done a pretty good job keeping it in good condition. Network Rail Northampton Depot. As we now find ourselves in the town centre of Northampton. I have been here once before, and the time I've been here once before, uh, I was coming back down from Scotland on an Avanti West Coast service, which was heavily delayed by about two or three hours. Um, and then it was terminated at Northampton, unusually, um, due to a lack of train crew, and then I had to get a taxi home. It was very expensive. So I don't have the most pleasant memories of Northampton. Not the fault of the town itself at all, but we're hoping such an incident doesn't happen anymore. Uh, before we get our next connection, we do have a little bit of time here. I can see some storm clouds in the distance, so I hope that's not an omen of what's about to come. Thank you. And welcome to the town centre in Northampton. A lot of very confused passengers getting on board this bus, uh, not knowing what route it is. I wasn't expecting to be here, I was expecting to be at a bus station, but hopefully that's not too far up the road. But it's here at Northampton that we're going to be finishing part one of this video today. Northampton's a lovely bus station. So if you have enjoyed this first part um, of our trip to see how far we can get north from London, then do make sure you stay subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out when part two comes out. In part two, we'll be heading north from here in Northampton to wherever it takes us, I guess. Ah, oh, that's a nice air-conditioned bus station. Anyway, I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.